I have heard of stories of my uncle encountering this thing when he was fishing, but none of them were ever very clear or accurate, so I never gave much thought, until the day I believe I saw the same thing myself. This was back in 2012. My little brother and I went off fishing of a pier with some friends on an island off the coast of Alabama called Dauphin Island. We didn't catch anything that day, so we decided to pack up early, right around noon, before anybody else had come down there yet, since leaving would be easier instead of having to deal with everybody around us. We started hearing strange noises in the water around us, which immediately caught our attention. Lots of movement and splashing. Even my little brother was perplexed, so we both turned and watched, expecting something to happen because we weren't quite sure what all this movement in the water was about. Were the fish suddenly biting? And then, I don't even think it was more than a few seconds later, out from the water suddenly emerges this dark figure that was the strangest thing I've ever seen. In fact, it had come so close it could have easily reached out and grabbed hold of me. The thing was shaped like a snake or serpent of some kind, and appeared to almost have a sort of beak at the end of its face, and sharp fins on both sides of its dark, slender body. It stayed horizontal to the water surface, as if swimming forward towards us, getting ready to strike before disappearing back into the depths below from which it came, without ever taking its glowing eyes off of us. We sat there in shock, waiting for about five minutes after, just to make sure that this thing wasn't going to come back. Well, I think it was more so from shock than anything else. I mean, it's not like we were wont to wait around for this thing. To this day, I don't know exactly what it is we saw out there in those waters. Yet, whatever it may have been, I know one thing for certain. I don't ever want to see it again. I was fishing one day out off the coast of Costa Rica. We had already caught a plenty amount of fish. Some new species as well that apparently have never been seen before in this area. And tons of jellyfish. We began also descending closer to the basin when we got a radio call from one of the nearby ships saying that we needed to back out of the area immediately. Apparently, and here's what's weird, is something very large was ascending from below, and apparently, judging by the sonar equipment, was set to collide with us. While waiting for instruction, everyone prepared their equipment in case they should return immediately or continue on course to try and avoid collision with whatever was coming upward. An enemy submarine, or what? We weren't exactly sure. We were told it was a biological life form, and nothing could have prepared us fast enough for what was to come. If we did collide, the impact would have been devastating on our fishing boat. This was no military craft of any kind. We were a fairly smaller fishing boat, nothing fancy by any means. We turned the ship around, and headed back in the opposite direction. And as we're turning around, we're getting word over the radio that whatever this signal is that's giving off to other equipment is supposedly colossal in size and had completely ascended from the depths below. After being showed a readout of the machine estimate calculation, reading somewhere or anywhere between 50 meters or 60 meters in length. I don't know about you, but I'm really unaware of anything living underneath the water that is that large. My first thought was whale, but I'm pretty sure whales don't exist in this part of the ocean. And if they do, none get that big that I'm aware of. Unless we're talking colossal-sized whales, but either way, it was pretty scary to say the least. I'm pretty sure that on that day, we were bound to encounter something far beyond our imagination. Something that only exists thousands of feet below the surface. Something we probably didn't know exactly existed, nor would we may not want to. But I can tell you this, that since then, my fishing days have been far and few in between. I don't want to say that this experience directly contributed to that, but I would be lying if I said it didn't have a piece to play. 
The thought of being capsized out in the middle of the ocean by something large coming up to the surface is downright terrifying. In fact, everybody on board was scared out of their wits. I think we all avoided a huge tragedy, and a special thanks goes out to the boat nearby that it warned us. It was late at night when I went out to do my last check on the net, and before finally calling it a night. It had been yet another successful day of fishing. I was feeling pretty good about everything, as I walked alongside the side of the boat. The sun had just begun to go down roughly about an hour ago, and there was still more than enough light for me to see clearly, at least what I needed to around the ship without needing any real artificial lighting on board. That's how large some of our fish were getting out here. Since we started setting up shop here four years ago, nothing has really changed about our fishing methods. Yet, the fish have been getting larger and larger, and more consistently better. I don't really know what to think about it anymore, other than the fact that we're going to need a much larger boat if we plan on doing this long term. As I was walking alongside the boat, something large came up into view ahead in the distance. It looked as though if it were just floating there as lifeless and not moving at all. I thought it was odd. At first, I assumed maybe it was just a large piece of driftwood or some sort of buoy that had drifted out from somewhere else, that had just managed to drift out somewhere else. Then, I see a large mass begin shifting around slightly from side to side before coming to rest once again. Several more seconds had passed by, and nothing. Just lifeless movement. Now I was growing concerned as well as confused at what it was I was seeing. As it began to take shape more and more, I could tell that this was some sort of large serpent-like creature. Something that was too large to be just a normal fish and larger than a regular sea serpent. I assumed it had something to do with all the large quantities of fish that we had been catching recently. Probably a food thing. Whatever it was, though, I wanted nothing more than to get away from this large mass, because the more and more I looked, the larger it seemed to become. I started cutting across the water towards the stern of my ship, hoping beyond whatever this large thing was, if anything, it would go away quickly. I didn't feel like paying attention to its movements anymore. I continued on the way I had originally come, not wanting to turn around or look behind me for any reason whatsoever. But something told me to turn and look, and as I did, even though I had probably made it no more than 50 feet away from where I was when I originally put my eyes on this thing, it had grown in size. No, not grown in size, more of it had emerged on the surface and I was stunned to see that it was larger than I could have ever imagined, much larger than initially speculated. And now it wasn't quite so lifeless, but actually having much more movement, and it was very clear now, and unfortunately not very far away. It was undulating up and down slowly, kind of like a giant eel would. Instead of side to side like I had originally thought it might be doing since I first saw this thing, I realized that this oceanic monster was much larger than I could have ever thought possible. If this thing would have been several hundred feet long, I would have believed you. While not so massive in girth, the body of this thing, as it continued to emerge more and more throughout the water, proved to be longer and longer and longer. And I could tell it was sort of stretching outward. It was really hard for me to tell if there was a face or eyes because I couldn't really see that. In fact, I was just so focused on the jet black inky color and how long and slimy its body looked, like an elongated tentacle sprawled out. I wanted nothing more than to get back up on deck as quickly as possible, but I worried about appearing weak or frightened, so I ran for my life where I'd left my crew before, turning around and seeing this thing again. The adrenaline pumping through my veins had made me feel like I was running faster than I'd ever run, and I could finally breathe at a sigh of relief as I had reached up onto our boat's deck, and nobody else appeared the least bit concerned. I turned around once more for a third or fourth time to see it fully vanishing under the water's surface. 
it's been several months now on sea since seeing that thing, and I'll never forget it for as long as I live. I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff out on sea, things you probably wouldn't believe, and yeah, this is among them. Even my captain has some pretty scary stories of being out on the ocean himself, seeing things like leviathans or large sea serpents from time to time, although I don't exactly know how valid they are, considering every time he's ever told about them, he's been pretty drunk off rum, so I've always tried to take that whole sea monster stuff with a grain of salt. And while there might not necessarily be krakens and leviathans, there is definitely life forms out there that exist in the grand ocean that probably don't want to be seen until they're ready to be seen. The sea could be an incredibly deep place with all sorts of creatures living within them. It would only make sense for any of you sailors out there to exercise a bit of caution whenever sailing, exploring, or just plain out enjoying the world. I believe this thing possibly had left us alone because either A, we weren't food, or B, it did not see us as a threat. Either way, I'm glad things never escalated further. It could have gotten really ugly very quickly. I thought this day would be like any other. Well, I was wrong. I sat there looking out at the water from my family's back porch. The day was gloomy and overcast, with little peaks here and there of sunshine. It always kind of looked foreboding, but that didn't stop my crazy family from wanting to go jump in the lake. I was a little nervous about going in the water. I always was. I hated how cold it was and the initial shock it is when you jump in, of just the icy cold water pretty much gripping onto your entire body. But my family... Well, they loved it. 65 degrees and they'd all be out there, going head first, diving into the water. Me? It could be 85 degrees and I would still need a wetsuit and a preferred heated pool. But that's just me. And unfortunately, this experience did not help but reinforce those feelings ever more. So my cousins were all taking their sweet time getting into the lake, just having fun. So I put on my shirt, my shorts... I wanted to show them I wasn't afraid to go swimming just yet. I stood up quickly, walked down towards the dock where everybody else had already just now jumped off and were heading towards the center of the lake, if not the other side to possibly try and race each other. Even my sisters made their way back to shore before I could even get in. They were already getting their towels on and walking back up to the house. We were a pretty close family, so we spent a lot of time together. It was nice, but at times, I felt like I was a little left out. Sometimes they would just go off and do whatever, and leave me with little no choice but to drag myself behind. This was kind of one of those times. Well, eventually, everybody else started heading out into the lake, instead of just sitting around talking. Even my mother got in, which is weird. She virtually never goes swimming. It's still her decision if she wanted to get in or not. But after watching everything that happened and my cousin not wanting to get in again after that, well, I guess I shouldn't be too shocked. So I made my way back down the dock and see that majority of all my family was getting in the water, calling for me to get in. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. But a few minutes later, after my brothers had all fully submerged in the water, I, of course, was the square one. Them were being eager, wanting me to jump in and I could feel my skin tingling with goosebumps as I walked down toward where I knew the water's edge was. The wind at this point had begun picking up, and there was this unmistakable chill in the air that had not been there all morning. Everybody else seemed completely unaffected. I tried my best to ignore it. I made my way onto the dock, jumping off without any hesitation, and as soon as my feet hit the water, they were nearly numb from how cold it was. It felt like jumping into an ice bath. So as soon as I re-emerged, I swam out away from the dock, towards where everybody else was swimming around together. I didn't want to see anybody that was too scared to go even a few feet further. My family, ecstatic that I was now in the water, all decided they should have a race to the other side of the lake, and they did so, of course, leaving me behind. I was not the best swimmer in the world, 
Although I could swim fairly well, I felt like the rest of my family were all Olympic swimmers. According to their speed and stamina, that always blew me away. But just then in that moment, as I was probably about 50 to 60 feet away from the dock, I could feel something slithering underneath me. Something slimy, like seaweed brushing up against my legs. I kind of had an urge to grab onto something, to pull myself away, but there wasn't anything near me, since I was just treading open water at this point. And the feeling of dread grew inside me like wildfire, as I swam further away from the dock, not wanting anybody to see how scared that I really was. For some reason, I kept drawing closer and closer until I could feel it all around my legs. This long, slimy thing wrapping tightly around, making movement now impossible. Slightly panicking, I tried kicking at it, but I didn't feel like anything was really there. Squeezing so hard now, I could feel everything. That's when I full-on panicked. I tried to scream, but my voice locked up, no matter how hard I tried. It began to drag me underwater, and everything got darker the further I sank. The harder I fought against whatever this was dragging me down, the stronger its grip became around my legs, squeezing them tightly together like a snake or a python constricting its prey. What initially felt like slimy seaweed brushing up against my leg now felt like a tentacle of some sorts, some sort of long, muscly arm holding against me, pulling me down. I continued to push upward, reaching towards the surface for what felt like forever, but I couldn't quite get there, no matter how hard I kicked or swam with all of my strength. So I decided that instead of panicking in that moment, I would do everything I could to fight back against this. My arms were now burning, but the more I reached for the surface, the closer it came to me. My whole body now was on fire with pain and my lungs felt like they were going to explode from the inside out. I could not stop fighting against whatever was dragging me down. And I felt something brush up against my face now and instinctively grabbed at it. It did nothing to slow this thing that had grabbed me in its clutches. Instead, I felt a branch or something that was drifting. That might help. And in that moment, I felt what can only be described as teeth sinking into my leg. Jaws, locking themselves around my thigh and pulling hard enough back. It nearly pulled me back down in the water. And for a split second, I took in a large gulp of air before being yanked down back under the surface. And of course, my family at this point were so far away from me, completely oblivious to what happened to me, they didn't hear or notice a thing at first. This thing, whatever it was, began to be wrapping around me even longer and tighter. Its body wrapping around mine several times over before finally coming back towards its head to join with what looked like a fin sticking straight out of the top of it. The pressure inside my lungs were growing worse and worse as whatever this thing was was pulling me deeper into the abyss below us both. It would move in these modulating patterns of slowly releasing me and then gripping tighter, releasing me a little more, then gripping tighter. It's almost like it was reworking its muscles so it can get a tighter, stronger grip on me, all the while pulling me down, down, down. And in one of its modulations of movement, as it was releasing itself to pull tighter, I used that moment to break free from the excruciating pain of my entire being. And just as I broke free, I felt these teeth biting down onto my arm this time. I felt flesh tearing from my arm. And for a second, I was free from its clutches. But I wasn't entirely out of danger yet. Finally free, I swam towards the surface, began going as fast as I could towards the shore, with this thing under the water right next to me pursuing me. My whole body now was going numb from the lack of oxygen, the blood loss, I didn't dare slow down, not even for a moment, or try and scream because I knew that would deplete my oxygen. I could feel the water around me churning as this thing swam upwards towards me, directly below my feet. Whatever it was, it was big, and it was now gaining on me, fast enough. I knew I was not going to make it far before its teeth were locked around my legs again. 
Knowing how close behind me this was made me swimming nearly impossibly fast as I kicked harder than I ever have in my life. I felt like forever before all of a sudden this thing came right back at me and slammed into the side of my leg so hard I went completely under the water yet again. Then I was pulled down by this thing yet another time and somehow managed to break free a final time and got towards the shallow part of the shoreline. Now, whatever this was, appeared to be retreating towards the darkest, deepest part of the lake. I was able to drag myself out of the water and onto the safety of land, where I could finally catch my breath. Every single inch of my body felt like it was on fire and burning, like I just nearly died. I don't think there would have been any better feeling than being back on dry land. My whole life had been consumed by an intense fear of open bodies of water, and that continues to grow to this day. I never wanted to go into that lake for as long as I lived, but even more so than before this. If only I could have got a better look at this thing, maybe if I knew what to expect when I went out looking for it. The sheer terror of the unknown, mixed with the pain in my arm and leg, were enough to weaken me so much. All I wanted to do was curl up into bed, and stay there forever. Finally, my family hearing all the commotion as soon as I had climbed back onto shore and collapsed. They were freaking out and I had an ambulance called. After seeing the lacerations and bite marks on my arms and legs, they were very unsure of what had happened. As soon as I was back home, they were worried about me. They didn't want to leave my side for a second. Funny how things change that once you're hurt, now all of a sudden they're there for you. I couldn't keep living like this. There had to have been a better way for me to cope with what happened out there. Instead of letting myself stay paralyzed by fear, I aimed to finally put all this behind me. I hate using the term lake monster, but there was something in that lake that was going to drag me down and finish me had I let it. I have gained a lot of perspective on life since this has happened, I feel. With every day that passes, I feel like I need to do more and more life exploring. If there is anything out there on the big blue sea waiting for me, then it's for me to find out what it is. I refuse to let myself be held back by fear anymore. Not after this. It feels good knowing that if something wanted to try and get me again, I'm ready. The setback has only made me stronger in mind and body, which is exactly why ever since this happened, I've been working on holding my breath underwater longer than anybody else, doing deep training exercises. It doesn't matter how hard or long it takes, one day I will defeat whatever was lurking beneath the surface of that lake. I refuse to let anybody ever get in the way of achieving my goals. After this experience, I feel I've grown so much as a person. I feel liberated by what had happened. The biggest thing that has changed is probably the fact that I know for sure that there are things out there, things we don't know about. Whether or not they meant to harm me or not, or maybe this was just some terrible accident, maybe I was the next thing on the food menu. Whatever it was, I'm glad I survived. The whole ordeal has even taught me how lucky I am. Who knows what would have happened to me if I had not been saved at that precise moment. I'm ready to take on anything. My friend and I had been diving already for a couple of hours. We decided to take a quick break. We found a cool little underwater cove that was lighted just at the mouth, below the water's surface. No visible openings, at least, so it looked more like a little alcove. We wanted to explore more. We decided to dive down there and see if there was anything in this little alcove. My fear began to grow as we neared. My friend kept going deeper and deeper, past his safe limits. Now, this was turning into something else entirely. To my terror, this large eel-looking thing emerges. As we're swimming away in fear, I could see this thing slowly following us while he continued looking behind his shoulder towards us until we swam out in open water, somehow beyond its reach, because it started turning around. My friend had a very hard time getting back up to the surface, but was able to make it after struggling through decompression sickness. He did not stop for his decompression stops. As for me, I did not go diving again after that day. 
at least for a long time. If I ever see that thing again in an underwater cave or anywhere else, I would definitely not be ready for it this time around. And unfortunately, my friend passed away from the decompression sickness. This is a tragedy I've had a very hard time coping with. When you lose a best friend, it's something that you can't wish on anybody. I always try and keep his memory alive, so I remain loyal to the things he enjoyed, which is why I try and recreate those things that are fun and exciting that he enjoyed on land. My fear for the unknown was so intense that it paralyzed me, leaving me no control over my own body. It was like watching a horror movie unfold before your very eyes just as you were being attacked. And all I could think about was the danger we were both in real time for this whole ordeal. But also felt bad for other people who were out there on the boat. They had no idea what was about to happen next. Along with thinking about how much worse it would have been if something actually got one of us instead of only part of us. And after everything was said and done, all I can really say is that I just wish we could have done more. And more of the time we had together. And my friend who at times appeared like a very experienced diver. He must have panicked and made very rookie mistakes. We're not super experienced by any means, but we've gone diving here and there. We know the diving basics. So for him to forget those things, I can imagine the fear that he must have been experiencing. But this eel, or whatever it was, was chasing after him. And we have never, at least I have never seen an eel that size before in my life. Maybe someday... In the future, when we're both free of our mortal coils, we'll meet up with each other again one day. I can only hope. It was 2009, and we just had a very bad storm off of the coast. I had been on a commercial fishing vessel as a first-hand account of what it was like to see a large storm. Even though all these events are true, I would rather have them attributed to somebody else in order to maintain my anonymity. We were out fishing when we all saw something large come up from underneath our boat, causing us to rock back and forth in the water violently, as if I was in danger due to whatever large thing came up from under my boat, making me feel unsafe in my own little world out there in the ocean. You feel so small compared to everything around you. It didn't surface, but I've heard of stories like this before. As if these dangerous encounters with large dangerous sea creatures are common. They're common enough that they're a staple in the community of fishermen and sailors alike. I was also on a fishing vessel out at sea when we first saw it on our starboard side. Coming up from the depths where it lived. As you can imagine, we were more concerned about being capsized or having our boat damaged by whatever this thing was that was approaching us. It was only visible though for a few seconds before finally disappearing back down into its underwater habitat. It looked long and serpent-like, as some have described them to be. I couldn't see what kind of skin those lines along its body were. I was too busy panicking and protecting myself from this sea creature. This is something that has been passed down throughout the generations of fishermen, based on their stories and legends. But keep in mind that this is only a fraction of all the crazy stories and tales you'll hear people talk about. I'm only now willing to share this with the world in order to try and save other sailors, fishermen, and ocean lovers alike. As if these dangerous encounters with large sea creatures are common enough. I don't want anybody else to have to go out there and go through this. I mean, life is precious. Especially when you're so far away from land, it's hard to see shore. Always reminding you, you're that far away from home. I was in a boat off the coast of Virginia, out in the ocean. I was out that day just hoping to catch some fish for my family, since they always ask for more every time I bring something home. It was around noon, a gorgeous day, not a cloud in the sky, and it was such a great time of year for fishing. It was at its peak. It wasn't cold, but it also wasn't hot. Even the bare sun was beating down on me. It was great. There was very little waves though that day too, which I think is strange since it always seems like there is some sort of movement on water, even if it's very slow and barely noticeable. 
but all there was on this day was calm waters as far as the eye could see. The only thing moving in the water were schools of small fish darting here and there, near the surface. I started to hear some disturbance from underneath those little fish dashing, but I didn't worry too much about it though. I mean, it does happen from time to time. I started making my way out further, and it seemed that it was coming from a spot slightly away from where all the fish were darting around. I didn't think much of it. It definitely wasn't anything to be scared of, so I kept going on with what I was doing. But it looked as if more fish were there up closer to the edge, closest to me, and they were getting more and more frantic by the second. Now, this very strange behavior, since fish are normally not timid at all, it's just something you see them do often, especially in a large group. I just kind of wrote it off as it being weird, and then it hit me. I was the only one there, and of course, this happened to me. I heard large amounts of movement in the water, like a large fish coming up to the surface. I looked across in the distance of the water, and something large just barely breaks the surface. At first, I wasn't sure what it was, but as it began coming towards the boat, this was nothing that I'd ever seen. It looked like a snake or an eel, a lengthy body making its way closer to my boat. Its head though was submerged down into the water. I couldn't fully see it, but it was kind of swimming and moving weird. It wasn't side to side as you'd expect. It was moving in a zigzag pattern. I froze up, realizing I'd never seen any sort of thing like this before in my life. The appearance and everything was strange. It had multiple sharp fins jutting down its back, and little black plates, or so it looked like. That's why I say it kind of resembled an eel, but it didn't. It was very girthy and very long. It acted very aggressive. I wasn't exactly sure how to do or how to act. Then, it began to violently thrash about, jumping out of the water, the same way a shark does when it comes up from underneath and catches a fish. It would land back down with a loud thud, and it seemed like it was doing its best to try and get in the boat. It got closer and closer each time, with each lunge coming out of the water. And this thing was massive in size. I'd say roughly 25 to 35 feet long. We're talking humongous. A massive body with girth for its size. It tried to get in the boat one last time, leaping out of the water and landing almost near the edge of my boat opening its mouth each time, trying to nip with razor-sharp teeth. I was startled and terrified, so I quickly cut my engine on my boat. This thing suddenly disappeared underneath the water, presumably swimming away from the boat. However, although no longer visible on top of the water, I did not want to take any more chances to have this thing get near me due to its size alone. But we're talking about a large aquatic predator here, and let me just reinstate to you, this thing was easily over 30 feet. And this is why I threw me off first seeing it. I never could have imagined a thing like this. I almost wonder if they thought my boat was a threat. For food or for what. I was only roughly 7 miles off the coast of Virginia when this happened. And I've been out here many times and have never seen anything like this. And so I suddenly hear another loud thud. And this thing is back. It's now thrashing around more violently than before, jumping out of the water again and landing with such powerful force it would cause my boat to rock back and forth. After seeing all these crazy movements out of nowhere, I try to go as fast as I can, and well, it kind of just disappeared after that. That's about the extent of my sighting. For all I know, this was some unknown sea serpent or sea monster, I, I don't know. My grandfather and I were going fishing on a lake outside Modesto, California. It was a beautiful summer day, and we had just pulled up to the boat launch with our brand new blue canoes, fully assembled after having put it together inside my own grandfather's garage. I watched my grandfather pull the canoe into the water while I untied it. We both jumped in and got settled. We were sitting on opposite ends of the boat, with our fishing poles in hand, 
when he finally decided it was time to get fishing. It didn't take long before we realized how hungry we were, after not just having any breakfast or lunch. So, we decided to finally have a quick break for a bite to eat. My grandfather had brought some freshly cut fruit, pineapples and strawberries. The two of us sat there and quietly enjoyed our snacks while just taking in the beautiful surrounding of the lake, taking notice of its rather deserted state, even though it was a very busy Saturday elsewhere. There appeared to be no other boats on the lake. Very rare. After a break of about 30 or so minutes, we both got back into our spots in the canoe and decided to try some fishing again. This time, I had my hook in the water and I could feel something nibbling at it right away. My grandpa was no doubt watching me as well because his line wasn't long behind mine when he finally had a tug on his end. Our excitement builded and crescendoed as we realized we were catching fish and before too much longer, we each reeled up two decent-sized bass. They weren't massive, but definitely large enough to eat and enjoy. Nothing to scoff at, for sure. We continued to fish like this for a while longer. After about an hour or so of catching these fish with no end in sight, my grandfather tried something a little bit different. It was another hour and a half before my grandfather began to pull up his fishing rod and I watched as he reeled in faster than usual. This had me ready for anything, but what happened next only made the hair on the back of my neck stand up like never before. I heard him shout out, Holy hell! As his arms strained from a solid tugging force coming from underneath the water's surface, turning our day into something much more interesting. My first thought was that he must have hooked a massive catfish which would have been incredible considering how big these fish are. He began to pull up on his fishing rod with all his might. No doubt the fish he hooked was a lot stronger than him. I watched as my grandfather started to struggle from trying too hard, and at that moment, I decided to stop admiring the view around me, jumping into action. I thought it would be best for me to move closer to where this tug of war was going down, so I could try and help him if needed. I pushed myself over towards where he was struggling. When I got close enough, I saw what he had hooked. A massive fish that looked like a shark that was pulling with all his might. After a few seconds more, the line had completely snapped and this thing dove down and vanished. The shark looking thing must have been at least five feet long. My grandfather and I both stared in disbelief for a couple of seconds before deciding to fish again. After all, this was our last chance. We cast our lines and headed towards the center of the lake, where it got deeper. We knew that's where the big fish were hanging out. After about two hours or so, my grandfather started to get yet another tug on his line. He reeled it in faster than usual once more. This time, I wanted to be ready just in case something happened. I pulled my fishing rod up and held it in hand waiting for whatever he had hooked to come to the surface. It must have been another massive fish, because as I watched my grandfather begin to strain again from pulling so hard, the line nearly snapping once more. But this time, there was yet another tug at my grandpa's end of the line. Whoever was on the other side of this thing was not done yet, and what happened next is something that will forever be burned in my memory. I saw what appeared to be a shark-like face emerging just below the water. The way it moved seemed unearthly, the way its head emerged and the way its body followed after. It was much more massive than I could imagine, at least ten feet long, grayish skin, and almost kind of having scales. It wasn't a shark, but it was shark-like. It also had a wide flat nose and two small eyes a mouth full of sharp teeth that were more jagged teeth. They looked broken and disgusting. I could tell that whatever this was, it wasn't going to let go any time soon. I jumped into action yet again, and I moved over in an attempt to help without hesitation. This thing dove under the water, and I knew we had to get back to shore. So we quickly grabbed our oars and began going as fast as we could towards the shoreline. 
I don't know what that thing was or what kind of shark it could have been or maybe a fish, but I hope it will not return. I can tell you that one thing for sure is my grandfather and I will probably avoid that lake next time, but at least we got some killer bass. This story is one that still deeply bothers me. The way the water moved strangely that morning, like something was rippling through it. The sky an eerie yellow color, like the sun wasn't bright enough to light up the whole scene. But there were no clouds in sight. No sign of any oncoming storms or bad weather. We were supposed to be here for another hour at least. But I swear, something was off about this whole place even when we began moving again. Everything just seemed wrong somehow. At first, there didn't appear to be anything wrong. We had been seeing tons of strange fish lately, since coming from our normal fishing spots around the Alaskan coast, even all the way down to Cali. The government has been sending us all over the coast. We sounded the depth and checked our readings. It said that we were shallow, but too shallow to be where we were apparently. We shrugged it off. We've had faulty equipment reading before, and sometimes if you don't let it recalibrate itself, it can cause temporary issues like this one. So we continued with our work, catching a few more fish than usual, which is good because they won't be able to hide from us at these depths, until Evan caught something of concern on his line. A long black thing was attached to his hook. Looked like some sort of kelp or something. It was too thin to be fishing line, however, so he cut it off and threw the rest of the small piece overboard. What was that? Who knows? Maybe our equipment messed up after all. Wait, did you say something? Everything seemed calm for now. We've definitely seen plenty of strange things happen in this area before, but this hasn't been anything like whatever Roscoe saw earlier during his shift. He didn't even describe it because he said no words could really do it justice to what he saw. I thought it would end up being some sort of whale or giant squid. They've both scared me half to death before when I first started out on a fishing boat. But this was different. I know I've said that before, but trust me when I say it wasn't anything like the whale we saw the other day, with its innards spilling out on sea. Or even just earlier today when we began working and that giant squid came up from below, clamping onto our nets, exploding into pieces. Whatever Roscoe saw was far bigger than either of those things. Smaller than the island in all honesty though, but still not to be messed around with. What he was doing at such an early time. Like I said, there's only so much you can do, especially in these parts. There's hardly anything in the water to begin with, so at least up here we have a decent view of things. I don't know why you'd want to get up here early and come out this early in the morning when there's nothing around here to see, no matter how much time you spend staring into the ocean's depths. Who knows? Maybe he just wanted some peace and quiet. Or maybe he had one too many drinks last night and was trying to clear his mind. Whatever it is, it doesn't make sense because we're supposed to be doing any maintenance, or whatever they're calling it now, until our normal shift today at two. But like I said, Evan got curious and snuck out before anybody else could notice him leaving. He's always been that way. I'll give him that much. Either way, I wasn't near as worried about it as the others were. They were running around trying to fish something out of the water, while Evan was still trying to figure out what this weird fish was that he caught earlier. Everybody else seemed pretty concerned for some reason. Scared, even. If I could dare say so, but unlike them... Evan had a different look in his eyes when looking at this thing. Interested. It didn't make any sense to me why somebody would be intrigued by such an ugly thing, considering that it looked like it had just come from itself. But then again, we've come across some pretty strange things during our time out at sea. The whales and the squid were just a couple of them, so maybe this is another one of those sea creatures that people keep talking about. Don't really know why they're called creatures if they aren't living, but I guess not everything can be perfect. It's hard enough keeping my mind straight on, even just normal days without thinking like this happening. So honestly, I'm glad to be alone right now, and away from everything else until we settle back down and go back home for a day. It didn't look all that harmful to me. If anything, 
It seemed more scared than we were. I don't think it wanted to be caught all that much. As soon as we let it go, it tried to unclip the fishing equipment from the tail that it got away from, with ease. It was like it was using some sort of telekinesis or something, diving back in the water and disappearing. Nothing too out of the ordinary happened after that, but Evans' reaction was still pretty weird. He didn't seem afraid at all. If anything, he was glad we got to see something like this, something not many fishermen get to talk about. Commercial fishing boat life is not as glamorous as many sailors make it out to be. It's a rough life, and can be for many of us on board. You are stuck out at sea for months on end. Minimal shower access. You stink. All you smell is sea. The food sucks. I can go on and on. But that's not what I'm here to write to you today about. We were about 40 miles out from the coast of Maine, fishing large amounts of tuna. We got word that another boat was trying to contact us through the radio, but we couldn't hear them. So we went up on deck and noticed these extremely large fins emerging from the ocean. After seeing five or six of these things emerge completely out of the water, one came right under the boat. This thing was at least four times larger than I was. The creature that we saw was pitch black, jet black eyes. The depths of its pupils swallowed all light, it seemed. It had what looked like multiple limbs protruding from its body, not sure if they were fins or appendages. The head looked very crusted and elongated. I know it sounds like some form of alien life from a movie or something, but what came out of those depths was real. It just kind of swam circles around our boat with the other five or six. We felt like we were in danger having no idea what it was we were dealing with. This was about eight months ago now, back in January. It still feels so real to me. I know what I saw out there. Nobody can argue with me about that. These things came right up under us. They never resurfaced again after that moment, and we were all very alarmed by this uncanny experience. I am writing this as a witness to what I saw on the lake. It's been several years since this happened, and it leaves me shivering and petrified. If you have seen what we saw on the lake, you would understand how we feel about this unknown monster of unknown origin. We were fishing in a bay, days after trying to get people by boat. We found a good spot where the fish were plentiful and the waters were peaceful and calm. The afternoon was clear enough that one could see through the top of the water. We could catch things like salmon, but not so clear that it left us vulnerable. The shadows were still deep and unknown. I remember my good friend Joe going frantic on the boat, making those little noises that only a panicked man can make as he tried to pull up a particularly heavy fish, but it got stuck in the engine. I turned around and saw what appeared to be tentacles stuck in the rudder, but this wasn't from an octopus. These were longer, and they appeared to have stingers all over the arm, at least from what I could see. Not wanting to say or see anything bad happen, we all ran over, carefully pulling at it and trying to pry it off and not lose our focus. However, my heart sank when we could see what it was attached to. Its face, gill slits and dark eyes, its whole head covered in this dark purple-like shape. Nothing like we knew of any fish before us. We tried to think what would have happened here, and how this thing's tentacle got caught up in the rudder. My sister, who was with us, Kelly, didn't seem too convinced that this thing was actually living, since she claimed that there were no records of any kind of fish like this ever existing, and freshwater octopi did not exist. But yet, I tried to convince her, this thing is right here in front of us. Hundreds of hundreds of teeth but you could tell it was stuck in the rudder, trying rapidly to break free. So Joe just grabs the machete and cuts right below the rudder as it's writhing and severs the tentacle just like that, while my other friend with his rifle shoots a bullet into this thing's head as soon as the sever is made. This thing writhes and squirms and disappears further into the depths. We get the engine started and the rudder's going spitting off all the blood and gunk and tissue 
that was tightly wrapped around the rudder before. How this thing got its arms stuck in a rudder, or how that happened, we have no idea. But all we know is, is that this was some sort of freaky mutated octopi looking thing. Hopefully, it's now dead. My family and I grew up in a village, off the coast of Peru. While it may seem strange to some, we were always dealing with things that many other cultures would never deal with. For example, we would often see large shadows underneath our boats in the distance. Thinking they were large schools of fish, like sharks, we would always be prepared to be attacked by arming ourselves with proper knives and spears. It wasn't until we got close that the first time we realized the shadow was moving much too quickly to be any kind of fish or even a whale. As we continued toward it to try and understand what it could possibly be and to be safe, its head rose from the depths to face us. Its eyes were the largest I'd ever seen of anything in my life, and they were blacker than night. Though it wasn't like the dark night we had on land, these were almost sinister-looking eyes. With a mouth full of dagger-sharp teeth, and gills almost as large as I am. We attempted to jump back in the boat, but my father remained too shocked at what he saw, missing his opportunity. My mother would reach down and grab him by a shirt just before he fell into those jaws that could swallow me whole without even masticating. He quickly fought off her grip, fumbled with the boat, then pushed us away from that thing. It launched right for him with its jaws open, and my mother pulled him back just before it could have taken his leg off. I didn't understand what was happening at first, but as soon as she saved my father's life, I realized he must have fallen overboard. We fought against this creature tooth and nail, trying to spear it, shoot at it. Though its mouth is so wide, even one of our best spearmen would have trouble hitting it without being swallowed whole, regardless of how well his aim might have been. He managed to score a hit on its body, causing enough damage to attract sharks, which wasn't too hard once they smelt the blood. The sharks began attacking it, preventing it from coming back to us, but my father was pulled underwater several times by this thing. The fight ended after I saw the creature's eyes roll back into its head, falling limp in the water. The sharks had finished the rest, hurrying to the bloodied mess and ate on it much quicker than you could think. This was a common occurrence that we dealt with more often than not, being out here in part of a village. Always all sorts of creatures we'd have to deal with being out on our fishing boats, where sharks were the least of our worries. It was like a whole other world out here. Well, after arriving back on land, my mother took me to a seer who referred to herself as a water spirit. She referred to herself as Chica, who even gave me an amulet that claimed it would allow me to breathe underwater for short periods of time. While it never exactly did that, I feel like it has been sort of a luck charm that has saved me from the cursed waters near the river of lost lifeboats. My mother claimed it would be needed more often than not, because there were more of these creatures out there on the coast, as we would be traveling from one spot to the other, as well as on these fishing boats. And for a while, my father spent weeks talking about our encounters with this thing. Only few believed him. Parents would stop sending their children down to the docks for fear of losing their loved ones to these creatures, especially after more of these things began showing up by the shoreline. My father went out less after that day, almost never with my mother anymore, because she knew what he'd seen was real. She did not want to risk him being eaten, consumed by what lived in the depths of the sea. Now, there are tons of tales and legends about mermaids living at the mouth of the river, right near the ocean, where these things happen. In fact, a lot of the legends of mermaids luring sailors in with their songs originated a lot in this area, despite what popular culture wants you to believe. At least in my culture there is. So things like sea monsters and sea creatures are not really something that are this wide myth where you are. And sometimes, these mermaid creatures were even more hideous than you can imagine, consuming the flesh of men, and even worse things. This is really a dangerous area to be, and growing up here wasn't exactly the easiest, especially for my parents, who were devout fishermen of our village. I 
I'm a marine biologist stationed off the coast of West Africa. We've been having a disturbing amount of whales washing up on shore this past year, completely eaten by an extremely large predator of exponential size. We're not sure what exactly is causing this. Even the local fishermen have been saying it's the Kraken, a sea monster. We were on a routine long-range aerial scouting patrol, cruising at about 2,000 to 3,000 feet. I was only the biologist along at this moment, and had a couple of hours before we were scheduled to return back to base. The co-pilot spotted something large in the water ahead of us. He brought us down for me to take a look, since, you know, I'm good with stuff like that. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It wasn't an average-sized whale, but one that had to have been easily 60 meters long. Of course, it's a rough estimate, but you could tell by the size alone, this creature was gargantuan. In fact, it had to have been a species that had been extinct for thousands of years. We circled around this massive creature that was on the surface. It was alive, and it moved surprisingly quick for something so bulky, but at least it didn't seem aggressive. The co-pilot brought the small craft back up to our cruising altitude and then reported what I just saw to base command before flying back into port, as we were both expected to be back there soon anyway. The following week, we flew over to where I last saw to try and find if there were other whales nearby, and if this one could possibly be studied more and found. While the weeks after, we scoured and we scoured, and we tried to find it again, but we never did. The thing that really bothers me the most about all this is if there are whales that are that size, that must mean that there are things that feast on said whales, and predators much, much larger. I'm about to go into very specific detail here, so I hope that you have at least a basic understanding of the technology behind sonar. If not, Google is your friend. With that being said, I work on a fishing boat off the coast of Australia. It's one of those huge long line ships that's roughly 650 feet, maybe 80 feet wide, which is large by most standards. As can be expected with such a ship, we don't carry too many people at a time. I was the only singular sonar operator, and there are five crew members including myself, and four other deckhands along with the captain. The morning of our encounter had started off pretty typical. We'd set out to sea some days prior, and had already completed one long line operation without any real sightings. We were heading back towards port for resupply when we stopped due to another run. The weather was pleasant, although a little on the windier side, which isn't too unusual. We dropped our lines around mid-morning, and within an hour or so, I noticed something strange on my screen. After looking for it again to make sure I hadn't imagined things, I woke up the captain who came over to take a look at what I'd found. We stood there in silence for about 30 seconds before he told me to zoom in as much as possible. At this point, we could both clearly see two very big dark objects just below the ocean's surface, no more than 200 meters away, the water depth being approximately 6,000 feet. They were right there. We couldn't make out exactly what they were, but we assumed it had to have been something large, but strange though because they were staying still and not moving. We watched them for about 20 minutes on the radar, and then they disappeared which means they sunk back down into the depths. We continued fishing like nothing happened. Once we finished up, we headed back in. I looked up a few photos of whales online and compared them with our own footage, trying to see any cross-comparison. Unfortunately, this is where things got even stranger. The two objects we saw appeared vastly different from any known whale species. Rather than looking like something that was sun-glinting off a huge whale's fin, it looked more like an enormous black shadow, looming, which really didn't make sense. Well, we all talked about it more and tried to look more at the readings. The next day, things went off without a hitch, and like the previous evening, there was no sign of anything unusual. But I did notice that our sonar seemed to be picking up small signals very close by. I showed them to the captain, 
who said that he had noticed this and dismissed it as rebounding waves from other ships. I'll fast forward through everything else pretty quickly. Anyway, our final day out before docking into port turned out to be more eventful than expected. A couple of hours after we started fishing, we began seeing these strange black shadows all over my screen. Only, they were much larger than the first ones, and we counted at least ten, all circling very slowly. Now, we all started freaking out. This was no normal behavior from any marine animal we'd ever seen before. They were roughly 4,200 feet below us. We tried to ignore them as best we could, but within a half hour or so, it became obvious they were ascending to the surface. Now they were roughly 1,800 feet below us. Some seemed to be slower than others, as they were not all at the same depth, but they were staying pretty stationary, as in not moving left or right, only vertically, up and down, as if these things were descending and ascending. That's not marine-like at all, especially not over the course of time. It's also important to understand this. These creatures, which we still write down on paper as whales, were much too big to be any kind of other marine life, or a submarine for that matter, and were easily, by our estimations, longer than 45 feet. Even more importantly, but at one point or another, I accepted that we had no idea what it was we were dealing with. They definitely were not whales. At first, we decided against going on any further. We don't want to run the risk of running some weird ocean floor terrain towards us. It's safe to assume that we thought there's no way that we should continue to fish in these unknown waters. Not while there are these things underneath us, circling. That was probably the scariest part of the whole thing. Just knowing that these things could easily come up if they wanted to, and do knows what to our ship. These things that were incredibly large. Again, these were bio-life forms, not submarines, judging by the signals they gave off. I'm still trying to figure out what it could have been. There was a lot of discussion on board when we decided to continue going back. It would be too dangerous if we went further, so we figured it would be best to turn around and head back to shore. We did not bother assembling another search party in hopes of finding a new spot. Well, this was our last day out anyway. I don't really have anything else to add, so I'll try and answer any questions any of you have. No, none of us got too close with our camera or sonar equipment. But there's no way I think really any of us wanted to. Not with knowing what it could have been. I've heard of some weird stuff happening out here at the sea, but not like this. In 1991, my family was visiting the beach near Santa Monica. We were camping out on a big cliff that overlooked the ocean. Everything had gone well. We were enjoying our time. There were no complaints. At nightfall, we set up our campfire and sat by it to keep cozy and warm. It was during this time that I noticed something off in the distance through my binoculars, since I'm really into marine life. This wasn't like any normal scene of wildlife, or even ships passing by. It appeared to be some sort of... creature. It wasn't moving at all, though. Simply sitting on top of the water. But looked to be this large black shape, kind of just hovering. It appeared long and flat. And at some point, it kind of just descended into the water. I can tell you this, that it definitely was not a whale. It appeared much larger. I don't think it was a submarine either. It didn't look like one. Honestly, after all of this, I'm more confused than anything else. It wasn't until recently that I would find out about the Ogopogo through online research. I wonder if there's any connection here. I mean, if that thing does exist, which I'm not sure about. Maybe that's what this was. The sighting and all only lasted about 10 or so seconds. I wasn't exactly keeping track. The year was right around 1989, in the summer. My cousins and I were hanging out at my grandparents' house. We always had this old, broken-down boat in the backyard that never worked. One day, we decided to drag it into the lake, since we lived right on Lake Erie, and just to see if it would float. 
and of course it didn't. It sat there all summer long with all of us trying to mess around with it, trying to get it to work again. Finally, one evening, after everybody else was asleep, I, being a dumb teenager, snuck out of my room, dragging the boat across the water, just to see if I could maybe get it to go. I don't know why I thought this. As I descended deeper into the water, I was probably about, about waist deep or so, and this huge creature came right out of the water, with a long neck that almost kind of had a white line going down beneath it. It turned and looked at me, and then resubmerged. I was in complete shock and immediately threw the boat, running back up to shore, sitting there, half soaking wet from the waist down, unsure of what just happened. To this day, I really have no idea what it was. It could have been a plesiosaur, could have been the Loch Ness Monster, I don't know. I ran back inside, changed my clothes and cleaned up before anybody could ever notice. Although they did ask me while the boat was dangling right around the shoreline the next day instead of being pulled up on the land. I was driving back from camping at around 9.30pm. Just as I was about to turn south off of Kootenai Pass towards my home in Nelson, I noticed a disturbance on the lake many meters below our vantage point. I slowed our vehicle to get a better view of this unusual sight. It appeared as if the wake of a motorboat was making its way towards us, but I could not see any craft nor hear an engine, and the disturbance was moving south towards the west shore of Kootenay Lake, where we were. We stopped the car, and then saw that the disturbance was bumping up against itself, as if something large were moving under the water. It came towards us, creating a wake, which made it difficult to distinguish exactly what it was. For some reason, I felt compelled to shine my headlights on this object so I could see its profile. While that thought didn't even leave my head, the creature lifted its head out of the water and cocked it at an angle towards our direction. My wife screamed and the intensity of the moonlight made this creature's scales glow a silver green color, which almost kind of shimmered as if there were diamonds embedded within them. This only lasted maybe three or four seconds before submerging, creating a loud whooshing noise as it dove. And I froze for what seemed like an eternity, but was likely only seconds before punching the gas and speeding home. And I can assure you that a vehicle going 80 kilometers per hour goes a lot faster than a normal speed does. I realized just how incredibly lucky we were to witness such a thing. If I had not been as observant as I was, nor as quick on the gas pedal, who knows if we had may have missed it or not. We were right in its path. Well, my wife, son, and myself were on a boat heading east. And I was looking out at the lake when something rose up out of the water, shaking its head. This aquatic animal was at most 20 to 30 feet from the shoreline. It had a head kind of like a sea lion or maybe a snake, roughly a foot long black, shiny, scaly skin, roughly, probably, I'd say no more than 12 feet in length total, its body, but it moved swiftly without any sign of a tail or movement in the body. I assumed there was much more body and tail below the water surface. It looked like a sea monster if you've ever seen one, kind of like an oarfish, except an oarfish has a dorsal fin down its back. This had nothing going vertically from its midsection to indicate any kind of fin or any sort of fish-like qualities. It seemed more mammal-like than anything else. Its movements were also unusual. This was the strangest thing I've ever seen. It came up out of the water about six feet, and there was no splash or real ripple. It seemed to be breathing really heavily when it broke the surface, but after that, nothing. There was also a small boat, roughly a hundred feet in front of us at this moment. The captain turned his head just in time to see our petrified eyes as we pointed towards what had just shown itself. He slowed down his engines to clear way for the vessel. We kept our eyes locked on it until it submerged back in the dark waters below, never to be seen again by us or who knows who else. There was others that had witnessed this as well.
When working at the lighthouse on the coastline, it was common to experience a wide range of strange phenomena. But, I will say on a handful of occasions, I saw some weird stuff out in the water too, usually in the early morning hours or in the afternoon. One time, a few years back, in the early afternoon, during a shift change, I was heading down to my car, when out of nowhere this guy starts shouting at me about this big monster that has been seen swimming in the ocean. I looked at him like he was crazy for a moment, but he insisted that it had been spotted eating up harbor porpoises or dolphins or some other type of smaller sea creatures. He then went on to say that he has seen the creature himself, even offered an exact location to where he had seen it last. It was roughly six miles out into the ocean, past a large sandbar, near the tip of a cape. It's no easy swim by any means. After listening to his story, I did not really know what to say or think about this, so I just kept it short, simple, and said, yeah, that sounds pretty crazy. He then went on to tell me that a diver actually saw this creature too, and even apparently had a picture that he had showed this guy. And keep in mind, this guy was a total weirdo, and also had been known around here with a history of mental illnesses, which is why I did not really take this guy seriously, or at least at all. Although the picture was blurry, he said, it depicted some type of sea lizard-like creature, multiple rows of teeth swimming through the water, eating whatever came in its path. So I asked him if he could stop by and drop by any pictures that he had captured himself, and he says the only one he had was the one the diver had showed him. Weird story, but, you know, so many people go missing each year in these waters. I've yet to see any oversized fish swimming near a coastline. You think if they were myths until you see them with your own eyes. Maybe he is right. If he can prove to me that he's got the pictures, well, I'll believe him. But anyway, that's all I got for now. One time, when I was practicing scuba diving, I was out at sea, and there was something unusual. I had just plowed straight into the water when it happened. First, I looked around to see if anybody else saw what I saw. It all happened so quickly. I thought maybe somebody else did. But as soon as this animal hit the surface of the water, almost immediately, another one mimicked it right after. Then, they both dove back down under the water for probably no more than ten minutes. They came back up multiple times within five feet of us, making these high-pitched chirping sounds, similar to dolphins but not quite like them. They were much higher in pitch. These were very small, probably only about three feet long. They seemed to have very powerful propulsions. The strongest part of this is that one of them seemed to have no eyes, just a large skull protruding out of its head where the eye should be. I don't think they were baby whales, I mean, I guess they could have been, but they appeared to be more human-like, as strange as that sound. Immediately, we all became very concerned, having no idea what these were. After they disappeared, my partner and I began asking questions, did we just encounter two baby whales, or what were these? They were kind of like baby porpoises, but different. They looked different, and they sounded different, and we didn't get the impression they were infants, and they were also white. I haven't really shared my encounter with anybody else because, I mean, I feel like people won't take me seriously, even though I'm a very experienced diver. This all happened right there. I saw it plain as day, and so did my partner. This is why I'm making this report. It also seemed like the best thing to do. At least there are people here who go out on boat rides and sometimes know that there is no such thing as baby whales here. I had a sighting of a sea serpent on Tuesday, June 24th, 2014. I was at the swimming area in Peachland, next to the private marina, with my wife. We were just about to go for a swim when I saw something that resembled a large fin emerge from the water. It appeared to be about three feet tall, dark gray in color and vertical. As it moved south, parallel to the beach, I observed it as it surfaced about 20 times before finally disappearing below for good 
after around 30 or so minutes. After that, I kind of followed it for a while, because it would quickly reappear and then disappear again. It then passed the diving tower before disappearing. I watched, expecting to see it resurface, but after five seconds of waiting, I went inside the water leisurely. Some swimmers had already seen me watching at this point, and after about 20 minutes or so, I went back to the shore, got dressed quickly before this thing could resurface again. It appeared gone for good after that. I'm not sure what this was, but I've never seen a thing like it before in my life. It was definitely not a submarine and it didn't have any propellers or anything. The day was clear, calm waters. There were no waves, so what you saw was exactly what was on the water. I find myself talking about this encounter quite often. I've not seen anything like it before, so I feel compelled to share the experience with others, even though most will look at me as if I'm crazy when I describe to people what I saw. I would like to add that this is not an isolated incident. I've read, heard, and seen similar things at least three times in the Okanagan area, dating back to when I was just a little kid. Fishing off the coast is always fun. You always seem guaranteed to find something good. This day, however, I saw something completely different that I can't be too sure what it is. Let me explain. The waves were roughly 5 to 7 feet high, and it appeared to be a long way out, at least 100 meters away from land. I saw something large surface, but wasn't sure what to make of it, so I just kept my distance and watched closely. A large fish came up. At first, I wasn't sure what it could have been until I saw the head more closely, thinking maybe it was an anglerfish. This creature had the ugliest face I've ever seen, and it was certainly not an anglerfish. Its eyes were extremely large and its mouth was full of sharp, long, jagged teeth, kind of like something you'd see in a top-rated horror movie. The sighting only lasted for roughly five seconds before it went under again, but that was more than enough for me to be afraid and to step back onto shore. Well, afraid is an understatement. It really did scare me. I've never seen quite anything like it in my life. It is a clear day. There wasn't much time before high tide, so I don't think I was going to be able to get into whatever it was out there. But you better believe I'm not fishing within 50 kilometers of this place anytime soon. As a full-time marine biologist, it's my duty to look at all the scientific evidence when studying data for potentially new species. That is exactly what we were doing on this day. We were in the process of setting up one of our miniature submarines to go exploring on part of the coral reef of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. That was near enough 12 months ago now, but my mind still recalls all of what happened on that day back in 2008. The day began normal enough, with us going out to our dive site. Nothing seemed off or weird at first. The water was clear and fine, no clouds and no rough winds. After we finished prepping everything, I entered into the sub along with three other members from my team. Everything went well, but once again, nothing abnormal stood out from before. We began making our descent down into the reef below reaching at about 10 meters below the surface. Everything around us was exploding with life. A colorful amount of fish, aquatic beauty all around. This was, of course, before the great death of the Australian Barrier Reef. As we're pushing forward, there was a slight drop-off ahead that went down maybe roughly 80 to 85 meters below. Still plenty of coral reef around us. We began to make our descent very slowly. All along the rock wall were homes for eels and other fish that liked to burrow in the small caverns in the walls. We continued our descent downward, getting more and more less coral reefs all around us. Then we finally hit the base. This section was much more cavernous than the rest. We were now roughly 93 meters below the surface. The coral reefs down here were pretty much non-existent due to the lack of light and much more poor nutrients. Coral reefs actually grow much better at roughly 18 meters below the surface, so we were not surprised to see a large lack of coral reef life. However, 
we did see lots of other types of small organisms, some worms and some small fishes, sea stars and other things all moving about in unison. The reason why we were down here was because it's been recently noted at the time that there had been a lack in population for several different kinds of animals that lived on the coral reef. We were here to explore around, get samples of water, sediment, and bring up any sort of life forms back up with us. The mission was going well until something happened roughly 40 or so minutes into our expedition. As I was looking at one of these societies inside the caverns, I looked away for a brief moment, not noticing anything out of the ordinary. But when I turned my head back to where I saw this group, I couldn't see these fish anymore. Surely they hadn't vanished into thin air. At the time, I didn't think much of it. I thought that my eyes were just playing tricks on me or something. I decided to head out and explore a bit more of what was beyond this cavernous section. As I got closer to the opening of this cavern, something happens. I get a really bad feeling, but at the same time, I just ignore it and head through. We shine our brights on and begin descending all the way through the small cavern tunnel and explore. This brought us into a very small chamber where it opened up and let us kept going. We went a little further, and it looked like they would lead us out on the other side, judging by the light. Right as we were coming out, we see something directly ahead of us. What I can describe as a giant sea monster, roughly 12 meters long from head to tail. It had a long body, two fins on the side, and instead of any gills on its face, it kind of had two small ones near the base of its neck. The head was that of a large crocodile, sharp sets of teeth running across its upper jaw. It also appeared to be kind of glowing from a bioluminescence of sort. It was amazing. At first, when we saw this, all of our minds went blank and we were in complete disbelief. I realized in this moment we were probably staring at something prehistoric. We were fearful by the sheer size of this alpha aquatic predator, but also in awe and amazement at this thing. This creature had found its way back down to this reef system. Not sure how many years it's been since it was here, but I'm sure glad we were the first ones to run into it. This thing got me out of my frozen state when the creature began to kind of slowly move in our direction, but not at us. My heart went right through my chest. It seemed like time was standing still. This massive thing slowly kind of moved out of our way, descending down much lower than we can go. After that, we decided it was time to head back up to the surface. Well, we didn't exactly find what we were originally looking for, we had found something much more exciting. Unfortunately, this was an expedition we did not have any cameras equipped on. After reappearing on the surface, we told everybody else on board about our excitement, what we had seen, and everybody was quite confused. But it's not like we expected this to be common knowledge. It wasn't until we got back and did some research that we were kind of able to figure out what we kind of generally saw. Our team is incredibly excited to get back here as soon as possible and begin doing more expeditions. Maybe we can find this elusive creature again. If there's one, there's definitely more of them. My brother and I have grown up together and we love to swim. And this day was no different. We were out swimming on one of our favorite lakes, Punderson Lake in Ohio. We've swam there since we were kids even though it's been years since I'd last seen him. When he texted me, asking to get together to swim, I didn't hesitate. It was already August, so the water was warm, but we've always loved swimming in lakes. Something about swimming in natural bodies of water just felt better than over-chlorinated pools. And on this day, there really wasn't anybody else out on the lake with us, which is why my brother chose it. No one was ever out on Pundy, except for maybe some fishermen or kayakers just passing through. That's what made everything that happened next so strange. So my brother and I are out there swimming around, and my brother notices something off in the distance, climbing into the water on the shoreline. He looks over at me and says, Hey, we don't have alligators this far north, do we? And I look at him strangely and said, No, we don't. It's far too cold. He looked back at me and said, 
Yeah, well, what's that? I looked back at where he was kind of pointing to, and with my own two eyes, this large dark green shape that resembled some sort of crocodilian creature descending into the water. The longer we stared at it, though, the more we both realized this wasn't just some crocodilian. It was squatting, as if squatting like a standing upright man would do when crouching down and jumping into the water, the same way a diver would. All this took place over the course of about three seconds, as it dove into the water like a man, even arms connected in front of it, just like that, vanishing underneath the surface. I looked at my brother, and our faces both agreed. It was time to go. We swam back to the shore as fast as we could, not wasting a second. When we got back to the beach, we sat down talking about it for quite a while, and my brother even ended up finding some footprints out in the sand. They were like large crocodilian prints, but larger than our own feet. Determined to get some more proof, we wanted to try and follow them, but ultimately decided it probably wasn't a good idea. The feet prints just disappeared into the woods. And, you know, looking back, there's no way I don't think any of us were going to follow those and see where those led. I know what I saw, and my brother saw it too. I've come to realize that what I saw was real. I can't say that I know much about crocodilians living up in Ohio due to the weather. And I can't say much about what we saw that day and the fact that it looked more like a man than it did an actual crocodile. I try not to think too much into it. If I did... I think I'd freak myself out. But I will say this. What got into that lake was not a crocodile. And what was standing upright on land and diving into the water was not a man either. Something strange happened on Punderson Lake that day. Whatever it was leaves behind a couple of footprints as proof. I just thought I'd share you my story. And maybe your audience knows of anything similar going on. I know you have a large amount of reptilian encounters... And I don't really know what those are, but it sounds like it would be up me alley. Maybe that is kind of what I saw that day. I guess I'll let you be the ultimate one to decide that. Thank you. My grandparents saw something terrifying while swimming out on the lake one day. It was the summer of 1990, just before my grandfather had died of a massive stroke. I can't remember what day it was, but I always tend to think of it as a Monday. It's when the big TV channels have new episodes on all their schedules. My grandparents had taken me with them to their cabin at this lake. They always go to it. This is only about an hour drive from our house. They also brought me there for two weeks every summer after school, until roughly I turned 18. This particular year, someday, around 4 to 5 p.m., it starts raining heavily all of a sudden, so my grandfather decides to take me to the dock. It's elevated, and we could see the lake very well. The water is darkish, almost a black-brown color. I always remembered it because it was so unique compared to the other lakes. My grandpa takes his cigarette and lighter out of his pockets, lies down on the planks of the wood, holding an umbrella over himself with one hand while he smokes silently. We both grew up in a small town surrounding this lake, and my grandparents have lived out there for like 50 years already at this point. So, he pretty much was friends with and knew everybody around there fast. He started talking about how much fun it must be living there year-round instead of just like the summer. It was right when the rain stopped and the clouds began parting. I can't remember whether it was all of a sudden or in stages, but the blue sky slowly became visible again through the big dark clouds. Before long, you can now see clear patches of blue between the really thick dark clouds. The water was still mirror-like, even though it had rained for quite a while. Grandpa began his usual small talk after that, asking me who my friends at school were and who I was closest with. We didn't really have the chance to socialize with other kids growing up. We'd always want to spend our time with each other, and by the time I had gotten in high school, I became friends with a few people who also really enjoyed hanging out at my place. They didn't have any siblings either, and no friends of their own. We all shared similar interests, so it was easy. Now, the sun had hid behind some thin clouds for a second, 
when it came back out after a minute or two. Grandpa began pointing in the water. He said that I don't have to worry about going to school tomorrow. He felt like something wasn't right today, and that maybe, just maybe, we should go home. He then asked me a very strange question, if I saw something in the water, but without looking in that direction, because I didn't want to look stupid if I saw nothing. He told me he was going to go take a quick swim before we left. I said I should probably go inside the cabin. It was kind of a colder day. I went into the cabin after that. But just as Grandpa was about to leave the dock, he turned around and said I should come out here again. Whatever it was that we saw before had returned. I looked down at the water from the cabin's deck. I couldn't see anything. Grandfather was swimming now, though, but I wanted to make sure he wasn't in any danger. He can't swim all that well. I shouted down at him if he was alright, but he didn't hear me over the splashing noises he was making while swimming around aimlessly. I went back inside after a few moments of waiting for him to come back up so I could ask what it was he saw earlier. When I went back to the cabin, I wasn't really thinking about Grandpa or what he saw in the water at this point. I mean, it's not often you see your own Grandpa swimming around for no apparent reason. Just as I fired up a racing game on my PC I got for Christmas, Grandpa burst through the door, a shivering, looking pale as a ghost. He told me what he saw. What he thought were two big logs turned out to be something entirely different. He said he reached an area of the water that was much deeper than before, and while swimming around, looking for the bottom, he could see that these logs were something entirely different. According to him, these turned out to be massive fish, dark gray skin, as long as an adult is tall while lying down, sharp jagged teeth with what appeared to be seaweed-like tentacles growing up the back. These things were coming from my grandfather, about to eat him. That enough freaked him out and he fled. We both just kind of sat there in silence for a while. We didn't know what to say about all this. I mean, what do you actually see, Grandpa? All sorts of thoughts were running through my mind at that point. Why would he lie about such things? He was old, but he was sharp as a tack, and no way senile, or would just make things up off the top of his head. I really miss him. Anyway, that's my story. Mariah. My best friend and I were on a dive boat off the coast of Mexico. Vibrant blue water corals and marine life of all kinds. Very beautiful. We had been diving for days, exploring caves and all sorts of amazing holes in the earth. This particular day, we decided to dive at a cavern site much deeper than the other dives. We descended down into this large cavern opening, approximately 30 feet under the surface. The hole was large and circular, with a small drop-off point where you could swim deeper and straight. I was closer to the drop-off, hovering near my buddy who stayed at 30 feet. I looked around and saw nothing unusual until I turned to face forward again. The moment I turned, and there it was, seeing this unknown creature darting back and forth in front of me, swimming parallel to the ground with its large body, keeping it upright so it could swim. This was the most impressive thing I'd ever seen in my life. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It looked prehistoric with its long dorsal fin. It made me think of a plesiosaur when you see that type of fin. What revolutionized everything for me was, after this experience, the fact that we were just 30 feet below the surface, nowhere near or barely deep enough to be this animal's habitat. Its movements were so fluid. It kind of reminded me of a cobra, with the way its head was swaying up and down and side to side. It was so elegant to watch. I watched her for about two minutes before deciding that I wish I could photograph this thing. So, I swam straight up with my friend to the surface, told the boat captain what I had just seen. When I reached the top of the water that day, we both got back on the boat, and I pointed out to the captain, and he saw it too. We could see this thing coming up closer to the surface, but still staying underneath and it swam right alongside the boat, its head still swaying up and down like a cobra. My heart was racing. I couldn't believe what I just experienced. And a few days later, 
I was able to obtain a sketch of this creature made by an experienced local fisherman on a boat. This is not a fake or a hoax. Of course, it's been several years now since this experience, but it's still just as vivid today as it was that very day. I have not been able to find very much information on the web regarding this strange creature, so writing this has been a way for me to share my experience, hopefully bring awareness to those who may not know what it is. The day had just begun like any other. I had awakened and remembered to turn my alarm off before venturing out on a boat, leaving for scuba diving practice. The sun was beginning its ascent. It would be another hot, sunny day in Florida. I had prepared for this day ahead of time. I carefully inspected my equipment to see if everything was in working order. All that needed fixing or maintaining were tended to correctly. Before venturing out on the ocean, I made sure to have a small breakfast at home. My instructor started me off with some lighter breathing exercises so I could properly prepare myself for what would be hours upon hours of breathing underwater. As the morning progressed, we went through more advanced techniques, using our diving gear while being submerged underwater. Eventually, it reached noon, and the sun now began to beat down on us harder than before, the bright light above becoming brighter by the minute as it stayed high up in the sky without any clouds in sight. This meant there were no shadows in the sight, which meant it would be easy to become disorientated when diving at deeper depths, or so I've been told. The water was calm as little waves gently caressed the whole of our ship, moving us closer to whatever destination the ocean had in mind. As we drew near to where we were practicing, all divers began placing their gear on their backs. Once everybody was ready, they jumped into the ocean, following one another and down into the depths below. I had to stay back for a second at the surface, looking around to see if I can sight something unusual. But the ocean was calm and beautiful, with underwater flora and fauna sprawled across its vast seabed. We began practicing how to maneuver our way through debris on the ocean floor, while not being spotted. As we were diving further down into the deep, I felt as though something up above us was watching our every move. My breathing became very erratic and shallow, so I began letting out short gasps of air quickly resulting in me panicking. Suddenly, without my warning, my breathing apparatus stopped functioning, not allowing me to take in oxygen at all. In my panic, my breathing apparatus had become partially stuck on part of a rock that I was next to. I tugged and tugged and pulled until it finally came free. But now I could hardly move as one of my flippers became stuck on something buried beneath the sand below me and I was really panicking. It was at this point that I could feel a pair of eyes watching me from down below, in the black abyss. I began moving again, only to be stopped once more by another object coming in contact with my equipment, this time nearly immobilizing my whole body, forcing me to struggle helplessly against the water currents. As much as I tried, all attempts seemed futile, as I kept getting tangled up in unseen debris right below the surface. Just when things could not get any worse, I noticed a figure slowly making its way closer to me from the dark, and the deep abyss sprawled out everywhere around me. My heart is racing. Panic sets in once more. My eyes are quickly skinning the depths below as this figure continues to close in on my position. And then, it reaches onto me, or what feels like it reaches on. I could not believe what I saw right before my eyes. An extremely large, octopus-looking creature, but gigantic, and beady black eyes, just staring right at me. And before I knew it, I could feel its tentacles slithering up through the water towards my leg, one after the other, gripping, simultaneously shaking me, holding onto me, trying to pull me down. I could only watch on helplessly as this thing held me still with its tentacles, and I watched yet another one of the same kind approach. A spear shot down and scared both of them away. It was my diving instructor. He was up on the boat. 
He had a spear gun and he had aimed it right near me to try and scare these things away. Long story short, I made my way back up to the surface very quickly, breaking free and stupidly, ignoring my decompression stops, making it to the surface in a very short amount of time. You bet I got very sick. I'm actually very lucky to be alive. I almost died. And not from the octopus, but from the decompression stops, or lack thereof. Whatever those things that came into contact with me, they were unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Nobody else, including my instructor, mentioned it. He just told me I needed to be more careful, and not be such a newbie 